for seven. Great. Thank you for that, Mr. Mika. When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies will be at peace with him. Proverbs seven. 16 and 7. Yes, ma'am. Proverbs 16 and 7. Good afternoon, Miss Erica. Hey, Pastor. Welcome. Welcome. I got a Zoom use and I got a phone number. Wherever those may be, welcome and good afternoon. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> All right, as everybody is preparing to come in, we'll give you a couple minutes and then we'll jump right in to Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, even his enemies, he who makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. All right. I hope y'all stand with your memory verses for the week. I think it's uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I believe that's Romans chapter 12 and verse two. Should be our memory verse for this week. Hope y'all hide the word in your heart. Amen. Nika gave me a thumbs up. Thanks to give us credit for his memory verse. Make sure you hide the word in your heart so that you won't sin against God. And it's the sword of the spirit. It gives you strength, it gives you a weapon to fight with. When the enemy comes against you, you have the word of God in your, in your life. And uh, so hide that word in your heart. Be not conformed to this world, <clears throat> but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, the only way to really renew your mind is to put something in your mind that's different from what you had been feeding it. So if you have to eat feast on the word of God, remember the word, cite the word, recall the word, and it will renew your mind as you go forward, okay? So that's Proverbs, uh, excuse me, that's Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. Our scripture for today, as people are getting ready to join, we'll go ahead and get started. It's going to be from Proverbs chapter 16, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he causes or makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a person's ways, when our ways please the Lord, Proverbs 16 and 7 says, God makes even our enemies to be at peace with us. And I don't know about you, but I want to be able to live in peace. I want to be able to live at peace and I want to be able to live with peace. And um, our peace gets disturbed when enemies come into our life. And none of us are exempt having enemies. All of us at one time or another, and even maybe right now, have some enemies who are uh, busy trying to rob us of what God wants us to have. And particularly, the enemy wants to rob us of our peace. And so what I discovered here in the word of God today, and I want to share it with you, is a way to have peace, even though the enemy tries to trouble your situation. All right. And that is by your ways, pleasing the Lord, because here in Proverbs, is, when our ways please the Lord, God will make even our enemies be at peace with us. I want you to take a moment and write down. If you can do that, if you're driving, don't worry about it. But if you're at your desk or you're at a place where you can write down, I want to. I want you to write down what is causing you to not be at peace. What is it in your life right now that is causing you to not be at peace, to not have peace uh, in your life? Areas that may be troubling to you, 
areas that may be worrisome to you, areas that may cause you to be anxious, um, areas that you may feel like I'm struggling. I feel like, Pastor, I'm in a battle. I'm in a fight every day. Um, I'm in a fight right now. I feel like I'm, I'm battling against some force or some pressure or maybe even some person or personality. I want you to just take a moment and write down the things or the situations or circumstances or maybe, it, maybe even people. It could be some people at work. It could be some people uh, that you know. It could be people that you live with. It could even be people that you love. <laughs> um, but I want you to write down, what is it that is robbing you of the peace that you know God wants you to have? And if you're in a place right now where you're saying, Pastor, I'm at peace. Life is good. I got blue skies, green lights, and peace down the avenues of my life. I want you to recall the time when you weren't at peace and you were worried or anxious or struggling or in a battle. And I want you to write down what was it that was causing you to not have the peace that you know God wants you to have. So just take a couple of minutes, write those things down. You know, it could be uh, a coworker that's just getting on your nerves. It could be um, a friend that you and I, you and your friend are at odds about something. It could be um, a supervisor. Right. You know, Demika might write down passage, just getting on my nerves <laughs> as my supervisor sometimes, <clears throat> whatever it may be. Um, it could be demonic forces. You know that, that the devil is busy and he works through situations and circumstances to try to rob us of our peace. And so you might write down my finances are struggling or struggle for me. Maybe my health, or my my body is breaking down and I'm struggling to, to get it together. I'm. I'm dealing with um, some emotional trauma or emotional drama. Whatever it is that you're battling with, I want you to make a couple of notes and write those things down so you can identify what is at odds with God bringing the peace that he wants to bring in your life. Because when God has promised us something, he wants to deliver that. And God has promised us peace, shalom, nothing broken and nothing missing. So what we have to do is find out when I'm not at peace, what do I need to do to get myself to the place where I can experience the peace of God in my life? And here in Proverbs chapter seven, I discovered something. I discovered something that kind of helped me understand that oftentimes the reason we may not have peace may not be external. I may not need to fight against the enemy or struggle as much as I've been struggling, because maybe what it is, is my be own behaviors that will make the difference in terms of my battle for the peace in my life. And listen to what he says here in Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways or a person's ways please the Lord. Stop right there. When he talks about that word ways, it's talking about the lifestyle that we lead and the choices that we make and the behaviors that we exhibit. It talks about the lifestyle we lead, the choices that we make, and the behaviors that we exhibit. When our ways are not pleasing to the Lord, then God is not promised to make our enemies be at peace with us. But when the choices that you make and the behaviors that you exhibit and the lifestyle that you lead please the Lord, then God will step in and he will not only fight your battles for you, but here in Proverbs chapter 16 and 7, he says he will make your enemies be at peace with you. So the next thing I want you to do is to examine your ways. Examine the lifestyle that you're living right now. Examine the behaviors that you're uh, exhibiting right now. And examine choices that you're making. And ask yourself, not are your friends pleased, not is your family pleased, but ask yourself this question right here. Is God pleased with the way that I'm living? And you don't have to answer that out loud. <laughs> you don't have to answer that in the chat on the Zoom. You don't have to answer that in the comment section. But I want you to be honest before God as you look at your lifestyle, your choices, and your behaviors and really assess are you doing what you're supposed to do when you wake up in the morning? Are you doing what you're supposed to do throughout the day? Are you doing what God wants you to do before you lay your head down on your pillow at night? 
because what you do in the morning, what you do during the day and what you do before you go down to sleep at night has a lot to do with the enemies or the battles that you face and the peace that you have or don't have. Because remember, God wants us to live in peace. He wants us to be at peace with him. He wants us to be at peace in ourselves. And he wants us to be at peace with those that are around us. And Proverbs says again, when a man's ways, lifestyle, decisions, behaviors are pleasing to the Lord. That word pleasing carries the idea of alignment and acceptance. When our behaviors, when our choices, when our lifestyles, are in alignment with God's word, in alignment with God's will, then that pleases him. And the only way to know if my life is lined up with God's word and God's will, I have to know what God's word is and I have to know what God's will is. And we know God's word is his will. So when I know his word and I know his will, then I can line up my walk with him. I can line up my walk with the word. Many times people think they're living right because they don't have the word as their guide. Many times people think they're doing the right thing because it feels right or it seems right or it seems right in their own eyes. But the Bible is clear. It says there's a way that seems right into a man, but the ends thereof are death. So you and I can't rely on our own sense of right and wrong to determine if our ways are pleasing God. No, ma'am, no, sir. We have to go to the word of God, find out what the word has to say, and then line our lives up with the word of God. I remember when I was learning how to drive and um, I was afraid to drive on 38th Street. 38th Street was the biggest and busiest street um, that I had been in my life. I didn't mind driving and pulling into my own drive with my mom and dad at their house. I didn't even mind driving on the little side streets that uh, were in the neighborhood. But when we got ready for me to drive on 38th Street, man, I would get nervous. I wouldn't want to do it. I would, have, I would go in whatever direction I needed to go to avoid driving on 38th Street. And one day my dad asked me, why was I so nervous about driving on such a big and busy street? And I said, because it looked like the lanes were too small for the car that I was driving. See, my father taught me how to drive on this big old uh, Cadillac Eldorado with the big hood and had a big hood ornament on it. And it just didn't look like the car was going to fit in the lane that I was driving on. And he said, oh, son, I know your problem is. He says, you don't know how to align your car in the lane. He said, take that big Cadillac emblem, that big wreath with the little emblem in between it and he said put it in the middle of the lane and as long as the emblem is in the middle of the lane you can be assured that your car is still in the lane you don't have to look to your left and to your right just make sure the emblem is aligned with the middle of the lane and everything will be all right so no matter what was coming at me no matter what was on the side of me I, all I had to do when I was driving down that busy street was make sure that the emblem on the hood of the car was aligned with the middle of the road. Pastor, why are you telling us that? Because when you're trying to judge and figure out, does your life align with God's word? Do is make sure that your life is right smack dab in the middle of what God's word says. If God's word tells you to love him with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, that's what you have to do. If God tells you to love your neighbor, even as you love yourself, then that's what you have to do. If God tells you to forgive others, even as you have been forgiven, even though you don't want to, that's my, even though you might not want to, that's what you have to do. If God tells you to be generous with the overflow of abundance of things that God has placed into your life, don't hoard it, don't store it up um, beyond uh, that that causes you not to be right in God's eyes, then share with other people. He says, because that's how you align your word, or his word up with your life. You first got to know what his word says and then put your life right down the middle of what God's word says. Don't try to live on the edges. Don't try to see what you can get away with because there's too much traffic out here. There's too many things going on 
for you not to grind with God's word. He says, when a man's ways, Proverbs 16 and 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, they are aligned with God's word. Um, you are approved in God's word or will. When it says our ways please God, it means that what we are doing has been approved by God. Uh, many times people try to live their lives based on what the polls say, based on what other people say, based on what culture has to say. Well, Pastor, I do um, what everybody's doing. Uh, Pastor, I can do that because everybody is getting away with it. Pastor, I can do that because that's just the times that we live in. Pastor, I can do that because all the people on my job are doing that. All of my friends, do it. everybody on social media is doing it. Well, you can't go by whether other people approve of your life and or your lifestyle because they don't have a heaven or a hell to put in. And they have not promised to make your enemies your footstool. They have not promised. They don't have the power to make even your enemies be at peace with you. So don't align your life up and don't look for acceptance in your life from or by other people. The only person who matters is whether God is accepting of the life and the lifestyle behaviors and choices that you and I are making. And again, I come back to the only way to know God has accepted it is to be in conversation with God, to be in, in contact with him, to be aware of who you are, be aware of what his feelings are about how you living, not living in this person. Um, and when a person is, is trying to get approved for a loan or approved at a bank for some capital investment. They can do that interview process. They have to sit down with the banker there the institution and they have to ask they don't, don't just get it because they need it they don't just get it because they, they feel like they're entitled to it no it's a word process and an interview process so that the banker can tr check out to make sure that they are trusted To answer them truthfully if they and to receive what the bank has for them to receive. So okay. So it is with the banks and so it is with God as our blessor. We have to go before him and put our life on uh, review. We have to open up all of our life to him and answer questions about our lives. And we want to hear God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now I'm going to make you rule over any. That only happens when we open up all of our life, lifestyle choices to God. And then here's what it says, verse 7. Verse 7 of Proverbs 16. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies be at peace with him. And what we want to have is the peace of God. And one of the ways we can get it is God says he'll make our enemies be at peace with us. Wouldn't you want that today? That no matter if your enemy is showing up in, in, in a personality that you're struggling with, to deal with or if you're struggling or with a circumstance or situation you like we know that the enemy works through people and situations and circumstances to rob of the peace that god wants us to have but god says step in and make your enemies be quiet he'll step in and make your enemies stop fighting you he'll step in and make your enemy stop opposing you by simply making sure your life lines up with his law making sure your behaviors line up with his body, making sure your ways line up with his word and his will. That's how we get the peace of God in our life. And I don't know about you, but I want to be at peace. I want everything to be whole.
nothing broken, nothing missing. I want to have peace in my mind. I want to have peace in my heart, peace in my emotions. I want to have peace in my family. I have peace in my church, in my ministry. I have peace with my children, with the people that I come in contact with. I don't want to always be struggling and fighting. Every day, you got to unball your fist, and open up your life to God, and start living the way God has got to live. God says, make your enemies at peace. And that's my word of encouragement to you out of the Proverbs 6. One verse, Proverbs 6, and verse 2. When Persians ways to these doors, he accepts it is lying, and he'll make their enemies be at peace. You. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you, bless you, and praise you. Lord, we thank you for your peace. That is all understanding. And God, we have enemies today. We have uh, people and situations and circumstances that the enemy is using to rob us of the peace and the joy that you've given for death, burial, and resurrection, Lord Jesus. And we want everything broken and nothing missing. So God, examine our life, our lifestyles, our choices, and our behaviors. If there's anything that's not like you or not pleasing to you, is not acceptable to you, or is not lined up with your word, we ask you to bring it to our remembrance, bring it to our attention, God. And we confess it, and we know it confess that comes cleansing, purification of all of our unrighteousness. God, you didn't say the enemies would go away. You just said you'd may be at peace with us, that we might be able to enjoy the table that you set before us in the presence of our enemies, that we may be able to walk boldly in and out of the places that you tell us to go without being afraid and walking in fear, but so walking in the spirit of you. Lord God, you pray for everyone that called to listen to this report, that you would find lives up with you to make our enemies to keep Amen. Amen. This is a very simple message based on number 16. If you have any questions or any comment that anybody has, go to Steve Brown Robinson on Rochelle, Fist of Man, Greg, Linda, Son, Aaron, uh, all of you are on the get started. Once you have no idea, we're open it up. Maybe I have any comments or or any clarification needed um, on the situation. Pastor, you're breaking up pretty badly for me. I don't know about anyone else. Yeah, it's breaking up a lot. Mm. Still, still can't hear you very well. Sound like a robot. (laughs) (laughs) Looks like we might have lost Pastor altogether. I'm not sure. Oh, looks like he's coming back in now. Trying to come back in. We'll give him a few minutes to to get back in. If he's unable to get back in, um, I'll give you some time to write your questions in the chat. And then uh, we can get some answers to you one way or another. Either he can do another Zoom where he answers the questions that you ask in the chat, or um, he can write out some answers Um, But we'll figure out how to get some answers to you if he doesn't, if he isn't able to get back on. So we'll give him a few minutes to do that. Um, And if not, I will go ahead and close us out in prayer and um, give you some time to get your questions in the chat. Um, In fact, while we're waiting for him, if you have some questions, you can go ahead and put them in the chat now. Looks like we have lost him altogether. He may be trying to get back in. I'm getting a text message, so let me check that. (laughs) He says, I think I'm losing my connection. (laughs) 
<laughs> I think you lost it, Pastor. Um, okay. Do you guys, do you have any questions, comments, concerns? If you just have comments, whatever you have, questions, comments, or concerns, if you put them in the chat, um, he'll be able to see them. I see Rochelle says, encouraging and refreshing message, just what I needed today. And Sharon Reed says, yes, the message was very encouraging. Thank you, Demika, for keeping us all encouraged. Blessing, blessings to you all for a wonderful week. Thank you, thank you. You guys keep me encouraged as well. <laughs> this is a lot sometimes, but I appreciate you guys um, being appreciative and encouraging. Um, if you do have a question or a concern, if you would raise your hand and let me know that you're writing something, um, that would be helpful. If not, then we'll go ahead and close out in prayer. No questions, Eric, Margie, Erica, Kia, Pam, Linda, no. Greg, Rochelle, Phyllis, Sonia, no questions. Appreciate you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Say hi to Kathy. I will do. Sharon, Bonnie, any questions? I have a phone. Looks like maybe Sister Green says thanks. Blessed word. Okay. Well, hearing no questions, I'm going to go ahead and close us out. Our Father and our God, we just thank you and praise you for you are God and there is none like you. Lord, we thank you for a pastor who is a man after your own heart, who is constantly seeking you day and night and um, feels, hides your word in his heart that he might not sin against you, oh God. We thank you that he is an ambassador in chains and that he freely offers up the word of God to your people and he pours out his heart like water before the face of the Lord, oh God. We thank you that um, he souls the word, oh God. And um, you said that you give seed to the sower. So we thank you for giving him seed. And Lord, you said that um, that when your, your seed is scattered, that um, we would get an increase, some 30, some 61, some 100 fold, oh God. So we pray that the word takes root in our hearts, oh God, and that we receive an increase uh, on your word, oh God, in our hearts, oh God, and that um, it will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path and encouragement to us and that your word um, in the edification of us of it brings us into the presence of powerful men and women for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful week. Thank you for spending your lunch hour or a part of your day with us on Victory in the Word. And that is my prayer for you, that you have victory in the Word of God throughout the rest of the day and the week. And we'll see you back here on Sunday. Thank you, Tamika. Thanks, Tamika. Thanks have a blessed day. afternoon. Miss you. Miss you. Have a blessed day. Bless week. Bye bye. Bye bye.